Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So today I'm going to discuss an article by Cheryl Paul, which is called The 38 Hard Truths About Relationships. So I'm not going to discuss all 38, but stay tuned. All right, family, thank you so much for coming on back. So I have the article on my phone, which is what I will be referring to. Um, again, I'm not going to be discussing all 38, but I will link the full article in the description box below for those of you lovelies who would like to stay abreast on the 38 hard truths. There, of course, are some um, other topics that she discussed in the very beginning, like the intro that I'm not going to mention here as well. But I will say that it is a very good read if you are into reading about why or you know the, the hard truth specifically and what her thought process is but the things that i would like to discuss here today so i'll just go ahead and jump into it so just remember you will not like your partner all the time that's the truth <laughs> That's the hard truth. You will not like your partner all the time. It doesn't mean that you want to walk away specifically in that moment. But there will be times that you're going to be sitting there like, man, you ain't going to like your partner all the time. So just keep that in mind. That's one of them that I wanted to come on here and make sure that you realize you will absolutely feel irritated by your partner that is just the truth of the matter they will do something to you where you will want to punch them in the face now disclaimer do not punch them in the face however comma you are going to feel irritated enough to want to do that but again don't do it okay but you will be irritated with their butts yes you will you have to also remember that sometimes you will feel bored with your partner. You will feel bored with the relationship. It will be mundane. It will be an everyday thing. It will kind of turn into a, um, uh, what's the word, routine. It will turn into a routine. Sometimes you will be bored with your partner. It is not always going to be the um, vacations here and there or the romantic love where you're sitting there holding hands and always mushy and cuddling. It's not always going to be like that. You're going to get bored in your relationship. So you have to find ways to spice it up. But just remember that it's natural. It is a normal thing. But if you are getting too bored, then you yourself have to take the initiative to spice up that relationship relationship again. Another hard truth about our relationships is that sometimes you will feel lonely even in your relationship. It doesn't mean that the other party doesn't love you or that you don't love your spouse or partner. What it does mean is that sometimes your partner might be off doing their own thing because they need to figure out something. It might have something to do with work. It might have something to do with finances. It might have something to do with something that you guys went through. I just told you guys recently that I just went through a um, missed abortion and finally a miscarriage and, and I felt lonely at that time in my relationship because my fiance actually shut down and we didn't talk much about it in the moment. We talked about it after I went through it but in the moment of me going through my miscarriage I actually felt lonely in that relationship but I also know that he does not love me any less and we just handled it completely different. So sometimes you're going to feel lonely in your relationship. Your heart will open and it will close. There will be times where you are gun ho for your partner, gun ho for your relationship, gun ho for everything that it stands for, right? And then other times you will be like, man, I don't know. <laughs> You question everything about your relationship. You, you are not everything about your relationship. Let me back up and not say that. But you are definitely questioning some things. Should you stay? Should you go? Is this the way it's supposed to be? Is this, you know, is, is this a natural thing? Am I overthinking things? Your expectations. You have to think about your expectations in the relationship and how things are just playing out. Is this for you? Another thing that you have to remember is that you or your partner will not always want to have sex. It doesn't matter whether you have children or not. You just just life gets in the way. You can be tired. For real, you can be tired. We, we get sick. We get headaches. We got all of these projects. Sometimes they're not physically there because they have to travel. And when you get back home, when you get back with your partner, you don't necessarily always want to have sex, especially as the 
relationship matures more and more the more time that passes guess what both of y'all sex drive is going to go down but that does not mean that you love your partner any less and you have to remember that anytime two people are in a relationship so just think about this anytime that you are in a relationship with somebody one of you guys is not going to have a an a drive for sex as much as the other person so somebody in a relationship is going to want sex a lot more than the other party and that is usually the way that it is not that it's right but it usually is the way that it is somebody in a relationship doesn't want sex as much as the other party and i can't say it's a man thing because women sometimes want sex more often than their partner as well. I hear this, I'm hearing it a lot more from the women, but I really believe that it's a, a thing that we're now being more vocal about versus something that's new, okay? You're not always gonna wanna have sex with your partner and just sex in general. You're just gonna wanna chill. Y'all wanna be in the same room, y'all can cuddle, but it don't necessarily mean, it don't need to end with sex. Now, I'm not knocking sex, because most of us like sex, but I'm just saying that sometimes in your relationship, you're not going to want to be intimate, at least to that degree. You might want to just cuddle that night, and that's it. You might want to just sit around with wine and just chat, and that's it. And no sex. You also have to remember, this is another hard truth about relationship, is that real love actually includes fear. And that's a hard pill to swallow because you don't want to be fearful in your relationship. You don't want to be fearful with your partner. But sometimes there is a little fear to like let down your guard. Or if you are the person who's used to being in charge because you've been doing it all by yourself for so many years. And then this new party comes in and then you have to relinquish some of that. You got to give some of that away. That can be a very fearful thing to do. Even It could take years for you to let down your guard for a specific thing. A lot of times it's something to do with the financial aspect of things, but it doesn't have to always be a financial thing where you're like, oh, you want to hold on tight. You want to keep in control of a specific thing. So sometimes being in love can also equate to some fear as well. That's another hard truth. The deeper the love, the deeper the risk. And that is absolutely true because you don't know what the other person is actually going to do until you guys go with go through with said thing that you needed to go through with. And so you're always kind of on the edge like, okay, I want to do it, but I don't know. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want them to take advantage of me. So there's a little bit of fear. So the deeper that you love the person, the deeper the risk it is for something to go wrong. But it also can go right. You just don't know until you go through with that thing. So, yes, the deeper the love, the deeper the risk. <laughs> Another thing, you will wonder why nobody else talks about how hard it can be. Absolutely, because most people sugarcoat and BS around in their relationship. Everybody is looking for perfection, and there is no perfect, perfect relationship out there. Perfect dating, there is no perfect fiance, there is no perfect spouse. We are all human. We are all going to piss one another off. We are all going to fall short at some point in the relationship. And you're going to be wondering why nobody talks about these hard times because only thing that you see is their Instagram and they're doing all of these wonderful things. Or their Facebook and they're doing all these wonderful things. Or their Snapchat and they're doing all of these wonderful things. But you don't see the pissed off times that they had. The times that maybe they're slamming doors. Maybe they're punching holes in the wall. I'm not suggesting that. But I'm just saying behind closed doors, we really don't see what the other people are going through um, behind closed doors. We only see what they show us out in public, which sometimes cannot be good. But for the most part, I'm speaking about healthy relationships. And in a healthy relationship, you act a certain way out in public. And you should act a certain way in private too. But you get my drift. Most people don't see the struggles that you go through and so a lot of people don't talk about the hard times because they think that there is something wrong 
with their relationship if they're struggling through something. And that's actually not true. When you struggle through something, you're actually, there is a, there's a rainbow at the end of that struggle. There's a rainbow at the end of that storm. Usually, if you two can pull it together, there's usually a rainbow over there. But nobody talks about the hard time. And, and we don't think about the hard times that a specific couple had to go through to get to where they're at. We only see the finished product. So that's a hard truth. Nobody talks about the hard times. They, we really don't. Another hard truth is that conflict is inevitable. There is always going to be something that you guys are not going to agree on because you have to remember you are two people trying to come together as one and you've been doing whatever you've been doing your entire life without this person being a part of it and now you got to come together and get their opinion and now you got to come together and compromise because it's not the way that you would want to do something and now you got to think about doing it their way. There's a lot of things that you have to think about. Now am I trying to scare you? No, I am not because all all of these things could can, can absolutely work out but you have to notice that at certain times in your relationship especially the many the more and more years that time passes there are going to be something there is going to be something that's going to occur in your relationship and con so conflict is inevitable doesn't matter what it is and again because we're human maybe I don't want to listen to you this time and I'm just gonna do what I want to do and deal with the consequences later what's what's that saying um, it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission and a lot of people a lot of people uh, actually go along with that and um, it, it's not necessarily right <laughs> but um, Conflict is inevitable. I'll just move on from that. So another thing is that you will actually hurt each other at some point in your relationship. A lot of times we don't mean to hurt our partner, but you are going to hurt your partner some type of way. Doesn't matter what it is. There's going to be some type of conflict or some type of issue that comes up and your partner's feelings is going to be hurt and not necessarily on purpose. You might be telling them the truth. You might be giving them your open, honest opinion about something and you're not realizing what you're saying to your partner is actually hurting their feelings. But it is the truth. So you need to say it, but just, just realize that at some point, you are going to hurt your partner's feelings, and at some point, your partner is probably going to hurt your feelings as well. All right, I'm going to read this one because I think that this is true, and we don't necessarily mean to do this on purpose, but we do do it, which is you will bring your past into the relationship, your childhood pain, your pain from past relationships, and pain from broken friendships. Also, so will your partner. And you will project this pain onto each other, each of you providing the mirror that reflects the unworked material from your inner world so that you can see it clearly and heal your life. So there's definitely going to be some past that you bring into your present relationship. You just have to work really hard to recognize what it is and to be able to push that to the side because no two parties are the same. And so your relationship that you have with this with this present person is not the same relationship that you had with the previous person. So as soon as you recognize it as past pain, something that you dealt with in your previous relationship, find a way to get rid of that because that's only going to be harmful to you and your partner that you're currently with. That baggage that I speak about, these are the past pains that is, is equal to each other. That is that baggage that I speak about that you're going to sometimes bring into your relationship, but you don't have to leave it there. Recognize it and get rid of it. All right, another hard truth for those of you out there with kids. <laughs> you will endure several years whether, uh, I'm sorry, if you have kids, let me read this again. You will endure several years where neither of you are getting your needs met. This feeling will ebb and flow. The dynamic in a relationship is never constant. So inevitably, having children will challenge your routine. And I'm currently going through that right now. Like, um, yeah, my routine was all about me. And now I have put on some extra weight. I told y'all guys, I told you guys about this before, and I'm trying to get rid of it. And now that I um 
just had a miscarriage recently. I'm trying to get back into the routine because I was very lethargic and not to mention with my first daughter. Um, I'm just trying to get back into the routine. I really am. And it is it's very difficult. I will say that. It's very difficult to devote all of my time and energy to me like I did before. And so I know that I'm not giving as much um, to him as well. But I will say that I do make a conscious effort to unfortunately put myself on a back burner so I can still spend the time that I need to with my family. But I just recently, this is now the second week in where I have started to work out on a consistent basis like I used to. So uh, these pounds will be shed off eventually. So in the next few months, you'll see me uh, uh, sexy again. <laughs> But anyway, this ain't what I'm on here for. I'm just saying the routine can get messed up when you have children. And I am a living witness to that currently. And she's a year and a half and I still have not gotten the routine back under control. And I'm sure I won't, you know, because each day she's always doing something, always growing. And at some point it's going to even kill. But I don't want to be... Um, super thick is the way I'm going to put it. I don't want to be super thick. So I'm going to continuously put myself in there. I have to make sure that I take care of me as well. All right, I'm going to give you like two more and then I'm going to wrap this up. Ah, yes, this is a good one. You will need to swallow your pride and apologize first, but you have to realize that this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing, but saying I'm sorry could save a lot of relationships. Because people are very stubborn, they are uh, they're e they 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 let their egos get in the way, and I'm not gonna say X Y and Z because he did me wrong or she did me wrong or whatever it is, and so we end up harboring and holding on to these feelings, and we never end up getting rid of them, and that is just constantly adding more and more distance between you and your partner so you have to learn to apologize and apologize first i'm not saying every single time but it definitely shouldn't be always where you have to be the first person to go to them it really should be like both you know both parties at some point being the first to apologize and you will notice that that is adding maturity to you and to your relationship when you say I'm sorry it gets the relationship back on track much faster and you actually feel emotionally connected to that person that much faster that much easier it's gonna smooth things over that much faster and it will close the gap it will close the distance between you and your partner so say sorry it's okay it's okay just say sorry let that let that move on really quickly the last thing that I'm going to give you is that you will age together. I love this one. You will witness each other graying, wrinkling, sagging, scarring. And this could be a source of grief if you hang on to an old picture of your partner. Or a source of joy as you hold and celebrate each other through the seasons of life. So after reading this list, you might wonder why anyone would sign on to a long-term relationship. Isn't it easier to be single? Yes, it is easier. It's safer and less risky. But intimate relationships are one of the places where we're invited to grow our capacity to love and to be loved, to widen our tolerance, to increase our patience, and to soften into compassion i definitely love this article so those are i don't know how many i gave you actually um but if you are interested in the full article again that will be in the description box below of course give me thumbs up if you enjoyed this information because i love sharing it with you if this is your very first time here to i love me me i would definitely love for you to hit that red subscribe button or the icon with my lovely face because here at I Love Baby Me I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy healthy romantic relationships so we could increase that marriage rate while simultaneously decreasing that divorce rate I will see you again shortly deuces